Alfredo's record was 751. You go 740. And uh, the run course record, you took that down as well, 236.15. And now that you've seen this course, how fast can somebody go here? Yeah, I we can definitely go faster. I think I still can optimize my position on the bike quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I actually had new shoes for this race. Yes. Developed uh, specifically for this distance. But I think with uh, the team in on, we can uh, make an even better shoe for the next for the next version or the next race. And also we can optimize a bit of training. But uh, the truth is we had really good conditions yesterday. The bike wind conditions was pretty good and the heat wasn't too bad actually. So I think we're quite lucky with the conditions because it's not often we get that fast. I've never been on an island before, but we have lot of, done a lot of analysis for the weather. And uh, yeah, it was record-breaking conditions as well. So uh, it's, it's going to take some to be able to, uh, to go even further down in time, but it's definitely possible. Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. So you've just seen footage with Gustav Eden and Bob Babbitt talking about his run course record and whether or not he thinks he could go faster, but making specific mention to his actual running shoes that he was using during the event, which were the on running shoes, um, the Cloud Boom Echo 3. Now, there's always controversy to come out of these events. There's always speculation. Um, and you know, in triathlon, just like anything else, people want to kind of, I don't know, get on the forums and I guess entertain themselves, you know, through, um, speculation or, you know, rumors or whatever. But one thing that didn't help was, you know, for example, articles like this coming out, this was from triathlon magazine, I'm not saying it's a bad article. It actually kind of explains it a bit, but nonetheless, less, it's definitely a, a clickbait kind of title. Gustav Eden's record-breaking shoes wouldn't be legal at the world athletics events at world athletics events so a number of con and then they follow on right just mentioning the run course record holder first and then they follow on a number of kind of competitors were able to run in prototype shoes that wouldn't be legal at international running events now international running events governed by the world athletics body of course have different rules in ironman as do international cycling events governed by the um uci you know the international union of cycling so it's um this is nothing new um triathlon has always been very open in what it allows in terms of equipment in terms of innovation uh, i would say that most bikes ridden particularly in the setups that they were would not be legal to race at a uci sanctioned cycling event so any tour de france any time trials that are you know governed by the uci you know these things wouldn't be allowed to be ridden because the positions uh, have specific requirements the bikes have specific requirements um and this doesn't go you know this also applies to running shoes for example uh there was a whole lot of controversy you know when it first came out about the the nike vapor flies and the alpha flies about whether those were legal and after you know some debate about it world athletics end up saying yeah they are they're fine to race um but the stack height the stack height needs to be you know a particular millimeters um and beyond that they're no longer legal so this is what the whole controversy around well, not controversy but speculation around gustav eden's prototype running shoes um these on running shoes here you know how high was this stack height and people were kind of you know jumping to conclusions saying that you know it wouldn't be legal and maybe they're right maybe it wouldn't be legal but at the end of the day it didn't even matter because Ironman doesn't abide by the world athletics code of you know regulations for running shoes so um there's absolutely no problem with what he did. So we just want to, you know, dispel that um, rumor or accusation or whatever you want to call it. Um, but let's have a read through the article nonetheless and kind of dive into a little bit deeper. So we all know that there are many triathlon bikes that aren't legal for UCI racing. Yeah, exactly. Now we're starting to see the same thing happen for running shoes. Norway's Gustav Eden was, was racing in, sh in a shoe specifically designed for him by his new sponsor on. Eden shattered the world Ironman record uh, World Ironman Championship course record in a time of 7.40.26, taking almost 11 minutes off the previous course record held by um, Jan Fredino, and also set a new marathon record at his debut appearance on the Big Island in just his second full distance race, no less. In the last, and this now is that we're quoting Eden, in the last 10 kilometers, I felt I had an advantage going back towards town. He told on 
for a story the company posted on its website. Not only with the shoes, Gustav wore um, a racing shoe evolved from the Cloud Boom Echo. Uh, so obviously this Cloud Cloud Boom Echo is something that anyone can purchase. It's uh, available to uh, any runner, anyone in the public, but uh, this was a prototype, you know, based on this kind of foundation. But that's what I was envisioning the whole time, going the last bit back to town. The shoes were a motivation for me because when you really put the power on, you get the sense of speed straight away. So Tim Hemming first broke this story for Triathlete, pointing out that the prototype shoes Eden wore at Kona appeared to have a midsole thicker than the 40 millimeter limit World Athletic supplies or, um, you know, kind of abides by. So On has not made the details of Eden shoe available, but the shoe did appear to have a deeper midsole than the World Athletics limit. So it's it, it really is speculation at this point. You know, there's no... Um, there's no absolute measurements coming out about these shoes. There's no um, information that anyone can find because they're a prototype shoe, but it's just based on speculation that they appear to be bigger. And it, But even if they did, it doesn't even matter. So it's kind of a nothing story. But nonetheless, you know, um, uh, Canada Triathlon Magazine reported on this World Athletics Rules when they were first announced in 2022. So uh, essentially what they go on is that uh, any kind of non-spiked running shoe, uh, or whether with or without spikes, my bad, um, the sole must be no thicker than 40 millimeters. The shoe must not contain more than one rigid embedded plate or blades. So this is referring to the carbon um, insert that they have in them uh, that runs either the full length or only part length of the shoe. The plate must be in more than one part, but those parts must be located sequentially in one plane, not stacked or in parallel and must not overlap. So. You know, we kind of go down a bit further, um, da da da. They were kind of diving into all this, and then we get to the you know the, the grunt of it, right? So Ironman typically follows many world triathlon rules, world triathlon, not world athletics. Uh, on made sure to check with the organization that Eden shoes were legal for the event. Here we are, here he is here running in these you know quite thick uh, sole shoes, um, stacked up pretty high, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because it's all legal. So um, Eden told, told on that his race plan was in part based on the performance of his new shoes. When I ran with the shoe, I noticed it was extremely fast on the downhill sections, in the downhill sections, he said. So when I saw that there was most likely going to be a tailwind and a slight downhill from the energy lab and back, the plan was built around that. Um, so, you know, then they go on, on wasn't the only company that's taken advantage of this, da 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 da, you know. Essentially, at the end of the day, what the World Athletics body obliges by or applies by is different to what Ironman apply, you know, kind of requires of the athletes. So they require that the, the sole must be no thicker than 40 millimeters. You can't have more than one carbon plate, um, you know, kind of carbon plates overlapping, da da da, etc. And also the shoe must be available for consumer purchase for longer than four months in other words you can't rock up in a prototype shoe so you can't rock up in a at the berlin marathon you can't rock up at the chicago marathon or any uh the, whatever you know anything that's sanctioned by world athletics in a prototype shoe same goes for the uci with bikes um and there are a whole lot more regulations reg regarding bikes particularly bike positions seat post this much behind you know the bottom bracket um the length of the actual triathlon bars, the extensions, etc. So there's a whole lot of regulations in the individual sports themselves. But for triathlon, it's pretty, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of just open, you know, it's open to whatever innovation exists. And we've seen the bikes evolve. And now we're seeing the shoes really kind of evolving. And this is smart, you know, if you're an athlete, and you have the opportunity to develop a prototype shoe around you and your needs, and you don't have to just use an average, you know, available to consumer shoe. Why wouldn't you go for it? You know, it's absolutely, um, it's an opportunity that makes sense to leverage. So nothing really to see here in terms of whether the shoe was illegal or not. We know, of course, this shoe couldn't be, well, we're assuming the shoe wouldn't be able to be ran in a World Athletics event. Nonetheless, it's fine for Ironman, no dramas. And I guess this is just another one of those stories. Uh, but anyway, I think... At the end of the day, I actually think this is really exciting because when we do have such strict rules and limitations, obviously we need rules and limitations within reason, right? You know, you can't put multiple springs in your shoe and, and fly off down the road. You know, that, that doesn't make sense at all um, because that would be unfair. But 
at the end of the day, I think innovation is good. Innovation drives performance and, you know, athletes are going faster and faster. The crowd loves it. It's good to see and it keeps the sport relevant. And I think that, you know, when we see bikes evolve, I think that's great. When we see shoes evolve, I think that's great. And contrary to contrary to other sports, for example, cycling under UCI and athletics under the World Athletics um, Association, Ironman is really, you know, kind of leading that innovation in this sense where they're showing, you know, what's possible with a bike, what's possible with a shoe, etc. So I think it's good to see. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, but anyway, you know, just dispelling the idea that these shoes were illegal. Yeah, maybe not for World Athletics or maybe not legal for World Athletics, but nonetheless in Ironman, not a drama at all. No, no rules were broken. Um, you yeah, know, nothing to see here. So take care, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.